talking helps to provide you with an objectivity that, in fact, what you're dealing with is a psychological disorder. It's not you. It's not a weakness. And Dr. O'Sullivan, as a psychiatrist, uh, you know that um, people may be worried about talking about their social anxiety. Um, is it a good idea for them to share? I think it probably is. In my experience, talking nearly always helps. I think it's good. It's good that in a time of crisis that you have someone to turn to and talk things over. Also, talking helps to provide you with an objectivity that, in fact, what you're dealing with is a psychological disorder. It's not you. It's not a weakness. It's not an inadequacy, even though the symptoms will often give you that feeling. So sharing the problem with somebody, I think, is a very good thing. It's a lonely business struggling with uh, social anxiety disorder by yourself. And it's good to have somebody by your side that you can share the experience with and encourage you, you know, to keep going. And how should they go about doing that? I think the first thing is to remind yourself that you're in, under no obligation to talk about it or to tell other people. I'm saying that because that takes the pressure off. So if you decide to talk to, to people about your disorder, you're doing it by choice. Then the question is, who to tell? And what to tell? How much to tell? For example, what you say to a child will be very different to what you'll say to a colleague at work, or your partner, or a family member. So reflect on that and decide how you go about it and how much you're going to, to share. When you're talking about the disorder, keep it simple. People sometimes have difficulty understanding, so keep it simple. Talk about it in very simple terms. Ask for feed feedback, because as I said, people have mis misperceptions about psychological issues. Ask for feedback, and perhaps arrange to talk to them again later uh, to make sure that they have a good understanding. Another important thing, and I, I always say this, be a well-informed patient. Know what you're talking about. Know your diagnosis and your treatment. Because that will come across in the conversations you're having with your friends, your family. It'll come across that you know what you're talking about. And that always impresses and makes your case much more convincing. And how does social anxiety affect a person's relationships, for example, uh, with their partner or their family. Yeah, it does. Social anxiety often affects relationships. It acts as a barrier to communication. It acts as a barrier to, to closeness in a relationship. Because we're anxious and distressed, we're preoccupied by our symptoms. We're not happy. We're struggling. We're preoccupied understandably preoccupied. That may come across to our partner or to a close friend as self-absorption. We're self-absorbed. We're disengaged from the relationship. We don't seem to care. We don't seem to be perceptive of our partner's feelings. And you can see how that becomes a barrier in the relationship, how the relationship can deteriorate. So it's important when you become aware of that, to talk to your partner. Perhaps start by asking, have they noticed any changes in your behavior? And nearly always they'll respond positively to that. Yes, yes we have, yes I have. Then talk about that. And talk about the diagnosis and the treatment in a way that they can understand. Then indicate to them what they can do what they can do to support you, to help you. Allow them to talk about that. Also ask them, in what ways has your disorder impacted on them and what you can do to help the situation? Sometimes it might be a good idea 
to bring them along to your therapist and have a discussion in that setting. And there may be times where couples therapy or family therapy may be integrated because social anxiety, social anxiety can generate a lot of stress in relationships and in, in the family. And what about with friends or in someone's workplace? Yes, that can be an issue as well. And to some extent, the same principles apply. At work, of course, there may be people who may need to know that uh, there is an issue, there is a psychological issue, because you have obligations and duties to carry out, and you may find it difficult to be productive in a way you were when you were free from anxiety. So it may be that your boss or a social acquaintance, or I should say a work acquaintance, that um, shares a job with you may need to know that there is a problem here and that you're in treatment. I have found that sharing of information like this is nearly always responded to in a positive way. People are for the most part, understanding. And I think the reason for that is most of us have a family member who have a, a psychological issue, be it depression, anxiety, an alcohol problem. Most people have a family member or a close friend with a condition like this. And when you explain it to, and again in simple language, a little bit at a time, asking for feedback, I think you'll find that uh, you'll get a lot of support from your colleagues at work. Thank you very much.